Minecraft Live gave us a ton of footage from the Wild Update, also known as 1.19. I'll be going over all the gameplay clips in this video, starting with the Swamp features, then going over to the Deep Dark, and finally, the Warden. So you're going to tell us about all of the, ex I mean, there's a lot of exciting things coming to the Swamp, so what are we getting? Yes, there are a lot of awesome things coming, the first of which is the boat with the chest in it. You've been working on what I think now will be my favorite tree in Minecraft. Yes, we are adding the mangrove tree to Minecraft. So as you can see here, this is a propagule and propagules grow from mangrove trees. They're actually like ready to grow uh, mangrove, mini mangroves growing from the mangrove. <laughs> and you can see here the mangrove tree grows propped up on root blocks. Uh, it has vines hanging down from the leaves. The propagules are actually growing underneath the leaves. They actually grow from the leaves themselves and I really like how the propagules are looking here. And of course, where there's a new tree, there must be a new wood type. Yes, the mangroves do come with a new wood type. And like always when we add a new tree, we are so happy, like we get so many questions from the community like, will there be a new wood type? <laughs> and, and therefore we're so happy that we were able to add a new wood type for the mangroves. And look at it, I think it's really pretty. And you also don't see like all the blocks here. It's gonna be like a full set for the wood types. It's gonna be like doors and trap doors and so on. So I was like, hmm, why don't I just make a mangrove swamp biome where I'm completely surrounded by them? So as you can see in this video, walking around, you're just completely surrounded in the mangrove swamp. It's just mangroves as far as the eye can see, just like in real life. And you have all the mangroves propped up on their roots, growing in the water, so you can take your boat underneath like Agnes likes. Yes. And you're just completely <laughs> surrounded by the awesome beauty of it. It's so beautiful. Oh, and I mean, during the sunset, every time I was testing, I would actually like pause the day-night cycle just to watch the sunset in the mangrove swamp. It was super beautiful. That's amazing. So you've actually added mud to do something really cool. Yeah, so we're adding really cool renewability mechanics to mud. The first of which is if you take a dirt block and pour a water bottle on it, then you can get more mud. And then the other one is if you take your mud block and you stick it on top of the dripstone, it will sort of like drip the water out of the mud and eventually dry it out, which turns into clay. And you're also using mud to make a new block. Yes, we're also adding mud bricks. So mud bricks are a really, really exciting like building block. And as you can see here, the, the brick texture is actually different than the other stone bricks that we have in the game. So they're sort of smaller, more compact, but it is really cool like to build with. It matches a lot of different block sets, and I, I'm really excited to build with them. Now, so we have like amazing new trees. We have mud everywhere. <laughs> we definitely need something very cute. Yes. Well, very cute and quite derpy because we're adding frogs. And you're adding another little, little tiny creature to Itty this bitty. update. <laughs> yes, the fireflies. So you can see them roaming around, adding a lot of ambience to the swamp, making it feel just nice and cozy at night. But really, my favorite part of them is just making the world come to life, like feeling like there is life going on all around you. And <gasps> oh yeah, also their <laughs> frog food. Yeah, I forgot to mention that, their frog food. Poor fireflies. Yes. Yeah, but look how happy the frog is. Yeah. I want to know more about baby frogs. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, you know, all baby mobs in Minecraft are just like tiny versions of the grown-ups, but with frogs, we're actually adding tadpoles. Once again, you deliver on the promise of cute and derpy with the tadpoles. Me too. <laughs> yes, and you can pick them up in a bucket. 
Yes, and that's actually extra helpful for the tadpoles because we have frog variants and when a tadpole grows up, it will pick a variant depending on the temperature in the biome it grows up in. So for example, if it grows up in a really cold place, it's going to turn into a snowy frog. Yeah, as you can see here. So the frogs have kind of like two main systems. One is the tadpole system and the other one is the cold-blooded system. So the frogs are like the first cold-blooded animal in Minecraft. And in real life, there actually are frog variants that pick a color uh, depending on, like, or they adapt <laughs> their color <laughs> depending on temperature. And we wanted to have that in Minecraft, we wanted to like Minecraftify it. So therefore, the tadpole is going to pick a variant instead, depending on, on the temperature. That's so cool. And, and we, there are three variants. Yes, it's going to be three okay, variants. Okay, so we've seen two. What's the third one? The third one is the tropical frog. So let's say you were venturing out into the desert or the jungle, and you take your, your tadpole with you, and if it grows up there, it'll turn into a lovely tropical frog. And I, what I really love about the tropical frogs is how just relaxed they look, and they're like blending into the sand almost. They're just so relaxed, just chilling there. Yeah. So you have these different color variations, but you also have something else special about the frogs. Yes, so each frog variant is going to have something unique that will be useful for the players. But we actually don't even know what that is yet because we are working on the frogs right now. That's so cool. And so last year you showed us the Skulk sensor, but I know you've been working on it. A little Skulk family? <laughs> a, a, yes. a Skulk family? Like, like, is it that yeah, maybe they're not so cute. <laughs> they're not so friendly, no. Yeah, last year we focused a lot on the Skulk sensor, but since then we've kind of been trying to figure out what do all the different blocks in the Skulk family do. And one of them actually is something called a Skulk catalyst. <sighs> And the main thing about the Skulk Catalyst is it's actually what causes the Skulk to spread. As you can see here, whenever a mob dies, such as a zombie, near the Skulk Catalyst, it actually spreads the Skulk underneath it. And the amount is based on how much XP that zombie would have dropped. Wow. So, you know, the deep dark, it's kind of overgrown with all these skulk blocks, so that means that lots of mobs must have died there. Quite a lot, yes. <laughs> Make it less scary. Oh, and as you can see here, when you mine some of the skulk blo blocks, you actually get enchanting points. Yes, and of course, if you still want to get some of the blocks for decoration or something, you can just use a silk touch. And then we have the Skulk Shrieker. <laughs> so when this block is activated, mm -hmm, it's going to give that really scary shriek sound that you hear, heard now. And it also gives this darkness effect, so it's like pulsating darkness. You can even see now when you're sneaking and you step on a Skulk sensor, even sneaking it will activate. Awesome, I can't wait. Oh, wow.
Well, that's all the gameplay we currently have for 1.19. As 1.18 gets closer and closer to releasing and we get more news on 1.19, I will be keeping all of you up to date, so stay tuned to the channel. Anyway, it's been me, 1UP, I do Minecraft update videos. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.